Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of The Sim Squad. Hi! So today I'm back with uh, part two of Beast Mode Fragrances requested by you. The first part was the ones without oud, but this one is more of your oud baby. <laughs> so this is for everybody who loves oud or who are planning to get into oud because oud is just an ingredient, uh, ingredient that will uh, elevate your perfumes as well as make them last the longest. So let's start with the first one and this is one of my oldest latafas and I love it so much. It is your oud mood. <laughs> In my experience, oud mood is one of those fragrances that you use to uh, use as a gateway into getting into ouds because this is such a soft sweet oud that will not bother you it has got 4.1 on fragrantica let me tell you the notes for it real quick the top notes are rose saffron and pimento the middle notes of agarwood caramel floral notes and patchouli and the base notes of resins woody notes amber incense and musk so this is a very Middle Eastern perfume. It has everything that a Middle Eastern perfume usually has, uh, which are like ingredients like amber, rose, agarwood, incense, a uh, lot of resins, you know, and musk, of course. And all these elements combined gives you this basic um, accord, which is like the Middle Eastern accord. And it just like elevates your perfume. It, this is a very well known uh scent profile in uh, in uh, the middle east and everybody owns at least one of these now having said that a lot of perfumes smell like each other and they're slightly different because they all have these base notes of the perfumes like udmut and then they add their spices or uh, woods and everything to change the composition the opening of this perfume is very potent it's very sweet the caramel saffron and the agar would like really like like slap you in the face like they literally come out so strong and you'll be like initially you'll be like oh my gosh this is too much so in the beginning just try and spray only two sprays on yourself but trust me when this settles down and this goes with all the perfumes i'm going to mention today you need to let it settle down you cannot just like spray a lot of perfume and like pass a judgment about it spray very few sprays because these are very beast mode fragrances and wait for it like for at least 15 to 20 minutes to settle down to actually get the real the middle note the you know the perfume that it is supposed to smell like now the exclusiveness of this perfume is the pimento in the opening and the saffron when mixed together along with all the other ingredients gives you that um, the, the the phenomena <laughs> that's oud mood and i just love it this is classified as a unisex and in middle east yes this is considered as a unisex because most of the women and men wear this perfume uh, maybe in other countries it would be considered more feminine because it has a very prominent rose but because it has like the strong woody notes and the uh, the amber and other resins and everything a guy can also pull it off but you have to be open to uh, the combination of oud and rose which is a very potent very strong combination plus all the perfumes i'm mentioning today guys if you feel like it is too watery or it's smelling of alcohol your perfume has not macerated my perfumes today on the table, all of them are like macerated like really well. There's no sign of alcohol at all uh, and it's not uh, diluted. It's like you I can actually smell the perfume, which is why it's so beast mode. This one will give you a projection of at least four to five feet and the longevity is definitely eight plus hours. And this is the kind of perfume that after the middle notes pass, the middle notes and the base notes stay and they stay very linear but keep subsiding slowly. So you will still get the perfume exactly how it smells, but a bit mellow, like by time. But I would like only refresh this perfume on myself once in a day, which is saying a lot, right? Because I refresh my perfumes at least four to five times a day. And if not, I change perfumes or I mix perfumes and everything. So for me to spray this just once during the day to touch up, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, this is definitely for the winter months, I feel, uh, or in the evening or an occasion where uh, as how oud is supposed to be worn. It's not supposed to be your daily uh, going out in the sun or going to work because it's going to claw people and it's not going to be pleasant for other people around you. Now, I don't want to like compare this to any other per perfumes, although a lot of people compare this to uh, oud bouquet by Lancome. But let me tell you something. 
Oud bouquet of Lancome is very much inspired by the Middle Eastern fragrances and you know that those base notes I just mentioned, those are all present which is why all these perfumes kind of like smell very similar but I'm going to try my level best to tell you the differences between all of them. And for the sake of giving uh, credit where credit is due, I'm going to like most probably all these perfumes, the celebrity will be uh, Prince Faza of Dubai. He's extremely handsome, he's very ambitious, he's very good at everything. He's an athlete, he's a poet, he's a photographer, he's a philanthropist. Like uh, I'm going to link his bio uh, on Instagram in the comments section or in the description box below and you can follow him and see for himself. So most of these perfumes to me, it reminds me of him because of the oud, you know, the Middle Eastern uh, notes. Uh, plus the fact that he loves horses, animals and everything. You know, it's like when you just see his profile and you'll be like, yeah, see me, this is like, so for me, this is like dedicated to Fazal, this entire <laughs> range because it's a lot of oud. For me, this is a good, uh, let's give it an 8 out of 10 because yes, when it was newly um, in the market, I loved it a lot and I used to reach for it a lot. But now I strictly use it for occasion wear or winter evenings. Next up is your Eternal Oud. Now the Eternal Oud is from Latafa's Pride collection. It's slightly pricier. It's supposed to be the dupe of Grand Soir. And guess what? I have Grand Soir with me. So I got this off uh, Mason Francisco de Chan's website. This is the Discovery set. And this has uh, this is the fragrance wardrobe for her. I think that's what they call it. And I specifically got this for you guys. Uh, it's almost like... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's around $300. But I got this for you guys because I know so many of the Middle Eastern fragrances are uh, inspired by Mason's, uh, Mason Francisco de Jean perfumes. It looks like this. It's beautiful. It has like most of the popular perfumes in it. And guess what? I have the Grand Soir with me as well. For the purpose of comparison, I'm going to first spray my uh, Eternal Oud by Latafa Pride and spray Grand Soir on the other. Now, Grand Soir is on your um, left side <laughs> and the Eternal Oud is on my right. Guys, it's so similar. It's so similar. There's a very mild difference. Let's just say that Grand Soir is like a little bit more elevated. You can just feel that those expensive, uh, what do you call it, the ingredients. But if you just spray uh, Eternal Oud and go out and if somebody is familiar with uh, uh, Grand Soir, they're not going to make, the, make out the difference. They smell very, very, very similar. All I can say is that the performance of Grand Soir is definitely much longer than Eternal Oud. When I had initially bought Eternal Oud, guys, it was uh, quite, uh, it was unmacerated. It was just released. So obviously, uh, Latafa like just produced it and sent it across. So I received a very unmacerated uh, version of it and it was very dilute. And I would smell gasoline and I would smell the dilution, you know, and the, the alcohol. So when the alcohol would subside, I would get this strong gasoline smell, which is like, if you're getting that, just be patient. Don't freak out. You've not got a bad batch. You just need to let it macerate. And anyhow, this is a winter perfume. So like, take it out in November, December. You know what I mean? Now this one, it's got 4.45 on Fragrantica. And most of the people over there also were like, wow, this is like a great dupe for Grand Soir. I think possibly this is like the closest one to Grand Soir. The top notes of this are plum, grapefruit, the middle notes of heliotrope, orchid, and the base notes of benzoin, amber, vanilla, tonka bean, agarwood, and labdanum. Like, think of it as a boozy plum, a plum which is overripe, like I say, it's almost fermented and it already has that boozy quality, but then you have like, uh, you know, like rum or cognac or something. Does this have any of it? It doesn't, but it just like has that hint of... Uh, uh, th those dark liquors, you know, like it has a hint of that and then of course it has the like slight bit of fruits You have tons of sweetness because of the amber vanilla and tonka bean and then of course you have your resins your agarwood and labdanum Now this perfume. Oh my gosh. It's like for me Like it's such a beautiful perfume and like people say no, this is not suitable for women and I don't see how because this is very ah, Very unisex this because it has those very lovely soft floral notes the, all the harshness of it and that rum and the uh, um, overripe uh, plum, it kind of like settles down to like a perfume that can be pulled off by a, a woman or a man. And in my opinion, this is like gorgeous. And if I remember, you know, it, think of that song, uh, you know, from Enigma, there was a, their first big hit. It was called Sadness. 
If you've seen the music video for it, it's... Uh, yes, I'm that old. So <laughs> if you've seen the music video for it, you'll uh, kind of like know what I'm talking about. It's very much like papyrus and ink pens and you're in a very ancient environment where people are like studying stuff. There's like, um, there's an observatory. There's a lot of marketplaces where, where there's a lot of like different, different ingredients that you find and you make concoctions and do experiments and stuff. I'm kind of destroying the whole <laughs> image of this perfume, but it kind of makes me feel that. It takes me back in time. It doesn't smell uh, modern or current, but at the same time, it's something you've not smelled before. It smells like something which was discovered by Indiana Jones in a little bottle or something. And, you know, it was put into the market by <laughs> Mason Francis Gurdjieff. So I love this perfume. Let it macerate if it's not macerated for you. This again, the, the projection is like, let's say two and a half feet because it is a scent bubble, but it's a bigger scent bubble. But it will not project till like uh, eternity or to, till Tokyo, as I say, you know. Um, but the longevity, it's immaculate. Six hours minimum, it'll become very mild after six hours, but it'll stay till you wash yourself, like take a bath or if you wash your clothes and stuff. So for me, this is like a 10 out of 10 perfume. This is a very beautiful perfume because I feel, although it kind of like goes into the same genre as... Uh, um, Hamra and the uh, other dupes, you know, Intoxicate and the Mason Alhambra's dupe as well, Angel Share basically. It, it's very much in that category, but this has that ancient feeling to it. And those have like a cabin in the wood kind of uh, vibe to it. And I have other perfumes as well, which I will tell you that represent the cabin in the woods, although the notes are very much similar to the, uh, I was going to say Grand Soir, the Eternal Oud. Compared to Grand Soir, it is... A very very uh, cheap option although like I know the pride perfumes are slightly more expensive by Latafa but regardless I think something you should get something you should try uh, again if you're an oud lover and you're watching this uh, video it's because you like oud and this is like a no-brainer for me go get it the next perfume on my list is Kaya del Fursa now I know many people don't like this because of that pineapple note but for me that is the whole charm that's the whole point of this perfume first of all the bottle it has this magnetic thing which i think is gorgeous the cap reminds me of the um the sauvage elixir kind of a thingy but the bottle is nothing like anything i've seen before i like this bottle it's very nice very small handy you can pick it up easily spray it easily the opening is such a fresh pineapple it's like a like a sweet pre-cut pineapple you know and you, they give it to you in this takeaway thingy in, in uh convenience stores or fruit markets and everything and when you open that uh, plastic container you know that smell you get of pineapple that's the opening now the magic of the pineapple stays for like around 10 minutes so if you do not like pineapple <laughs> wait for it to settle for 10 minutes so that the other ingredients come forward and you're gonna love this perfume it quickly turns very masculine like the initial blast of pineapple and like the initial uh, opening notes are still feminine but ultimately it settles down to a very masculine scent but you know what I like it so much that I also use it and I don't care but I use this specifically for going out on events I won't wear this on occasions because occasions over here mostly is uh, something that you use like the traditional uh, scents you know but this one is a very 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 ultra modern scent let me tell you the top notes for this so this is compared to black excess for men top notes are pineapple and saffron middle notes of jasmine balsamic fir and the base notes of amber, cedar and agarwood. Now the agarwood in this is like the prettiest agarwood I've ever noticed. I don't know because it's in combination of, it's a combination of pineapple and the agarwood. It's so unique, so different. It just smells, you know it smells like a man, but at the same time it's, uh, it's a playful, fresher and more up-to-date kind of oud. Like if you've not tried this perfume, you must try it. By the way guys, all these perfumes are not blind buys because if you do not like oud or even if you like oud, some of them can be very, very cloying. And I'm coming to the ones which are like super cloying. But this one is not all that cloying. So I think it is, I don't know, if you like slightly masculine scents, but then if, if you absolutely love the pineapple scent, you're going to love this perfume. Because the pineapple reduces, but it never goes away. That's what I like about this perfume. Because normally the pineapple in the opening just disappears, leaves a sweetness behind. But in this, I can still like smell the pineapple on myself even after six hours this one's projection is like 
three feet because it does project a lot because of that pineapple it just spreads everywhere but you know in the air especially like on the strip it's different when i spray it on myself it's different but you know when you catch whiffs of this perfume around you or if somebody's wearing it and if you catch their you know like a uh, drift catch their drift, uh catch their trail you know you will actually be like what perfume is that you'll find the other person very attractive very uh again i would love I, i'm using this word it's very up to date it's very modern and it does have this it has this 1990s early 2000 uh the black excess i don't know when it was launched but it's it's kind of reminding me of that era but slightly elevated because of that other wood for me this definitely leans masculine so i'm not gonna tell you like oh it's unisex and females can wear it i like wearing it but maybe it's not suitable for women so try it before you buy it uh the projection for this is like a good three to four feet longevity six hours minimum uh it depends on how much you wear it but for me this projects a lot it uh, uh stays a lot on my skin and i can smell it at the end of the day as well that's why for me this is like a be smooth fragrance this one again initially this was not very well macerated for me so it would disappear and i was always wondering like why are people saying it's like a long uh, uh, lasting perfume but now i realize that it is it's a gorgeous perfume my rating for this is Mm, let's give it 8 out of 10. It's a very beautiful fragrance, but it's not like, wow, I cannot live without it, you know? It is still gorgeous, but um, definitely worth the praise and definitely worthy of being in this particular video. Okay, I have four Shagaf Ouds for you. I know it's a lot, but you know what? These have to be in the Beast Mode fragrances because they are Beast Mode. The first one, of course, is your original Shagaf Oud. What does it smell like? It smells like the basic literally see i've just sprayed one spray because it's gonna be so strong people was asking me if this is reformulated or not uh because like they're saying that doesn't stay all that long guys you're probably getting anosmic because no this is a recent uh, uh batch and it works just fine it stays like 12 hours literally doesn't go away you need to wash it off you know now you know what i wanted to tell you the difference between for example uh middle eastern you know they have the basic elements to it of the middle eastern perfumes but they make slight changes this one is slightly woody this one is extremely extremely rosy so that jammy rose the opening is like saffron and agar wood and rose like the rose is so strong in this that it kind of dominates and the agar wood is kind of left behind but again this rose will slightly like sober down and allow the other notes to be active as well but if you do not like rose note and especially the indolic ones the ones that are like really like you know this is a red rose and you know this is an absolute of the uh, the oil that they've used for the rose on fragrantica this has got 4.15 and this is also compared to lancome oud bouquet i'm telling you it's like it, they all have like this base element and then you tweak here and there let me tell you the notes for this like literally can't get more basic than this Top notes of saffron, middle notes of agarwood and rose, and the base notes of agarwood, praline, and vanilla. Super, super, super soft. Sorry, not soft. Super, super, super sweet agarwood with rose and saffron. That's it. Just think of these four notes and you, you'll have your uh, shagaf oud. Let me not talk about it too much because I've individually done all these reviews. But this one smells like, you know, you are in Turkey and you're having a Turkish delight. You know, the rose flavored one. And there's oud burning around you. This is like the visual I can tell you, like how I feel when I smell this perfume. It's very potent. It's very dress up. It's very, uh, you know, it smells something like the bottle. It's like gold. It's very rich. It's very uh, pricey. You feel expensive when you wear this perfume. This is definitely not a blind buy, guys. Uh, it definitely leans a little feminine because of the overpowering rose, let's just call it. It's a very, very, very overpowering rose. So maybe men might shy off that, but Middle Eastern men, they wear perfumes like this. They love rose. So the, over here, it's very much a unisex perfume. You choose for yourself whether this is, you know. <laughs> this one's projection is six to eight feet. I'm not kidding. You spray it. This is the perfume that when you're moving around, people will smell it before you, they see you. So smell, bef smell me before you see me kind of perfume. This is one of those. Somebody had asked me recently, like, do you have perfumes like that? I'll try and make a compilation of those perfumes, but... Guess what? All these shagafs are going to be in that because these all are monster projection, monster longevity. And off late, it's been like uh, there's a price drop in this because uh, Swiss Arabian now is releasing many other perfumes. They have like a lot of flankers for it, which I'm going to list right now. 
that's why I didn't know the price was like when I bought it it was quite discounted I think I had got it in a set or something that's why it was quite discounted but this one I would give it like oh, again 8 out of 10 it's not like I cannot live without it but it's a gorgeous perfume the next one is his sister that's the Shagaf Oud Aswad or brother actually it'll be a brother uh, this one is a smoky version but you know what I prefer this one to the original Shagaf Oud and I'll tell you why this one has got lesser on Fragrantica. This has got 4.04. Uh, and this one is compared to uh, Dolce Gabbana's Velvet Tender Oud. This one is a cold perfume. Like, this guy was like hot, hot, warm. This one is like cold. It literally smells uh, arrogant. It smells non-approachable. It's very beautiful, very classy very royal you know like some people have that presence where they are like um, you just know that the clothes they are wearing must be expensive their attitude is like old money they are very polished they have this mannerism about them uh, but at the same time you get intimidated to approach them you know this is one of those kind of perfumes so in the days where you want people love to like approach you <laughs> you want to look snobby and rich this is the one this is again a very dress up perfume this is definitely a winter perfume also in winter this is an evening perfume i would prefer not to wear this during daytime unless there's absolutely no sun let's say it's super cloudy and dark during the day i would wear this perfume i would take it out and it smells gorgeous when it rains oh my gosh i was wearing this once and it merely drizzled in the desert over here and that combination of like the earth with the droplets of water and this perfume was I can't even like if I could bottle that scent I would it, but it was like one of the most beautiful scent moments I had in my life this is again unisex leaning masculine unisex when I say for females who are daring who have a bold personality who if you want to be a wallflower this is not for you you know this is like a very much like look at me perfume again smell me before you see me and this is a monster perfume the performance uh, the projection is very much like the original Shagaf Oud it's eight feet at least the projection and the longevity is like 12 hours plus like there's nothing i can say or do to like cover up the fact that this is going to be a very cloying perfume you need to be super careful i use only two sprays of the entire shaga food range i spray only two sprays this for me is like a 10 out of 10 okay now some people are saying that this smells like a churchy kind of vibe and that's why the celebrity i had given this to was keanu reeves from constantine you know like <laughs> So yes, it is a little incensey because like clearly the agar wood which is the agar wood which is mentioned in this is slightly what do you call it like a smoky one. Let me tell you the notes for this. The top notes are rose, saffron, woody notes, and thyme. Uh, middle notes of rose, agar wood, patchouli, cumin, coriander, and jasmine. And the base notes of oud, leather, amber, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. Don't get scared of the cumin and coriander. The spiciness is like a sweet spiciness. It is not spicy spicy you know which is why i feel like this is a very cold very uh yes it is churchy i don't mind i don't mind smelling like a church why not this for me is like a 10 out of 10 one of the best performing perfumes one of my very treasured and 10 out of 10 means that i will purchase it once it finishes the next one is a sister i would get i guess i would call it this is the uh chigaf oud abiyad so basically abiyad is white uh, aswad was black there's Azrak, which is blue, and Ahmar, which is red. These are the colors in um, Arabic. <laughs> I was going to say Middle East, but Arabic. This one, oh my gosh. Now, this one is even bolder. This is spicier, very herbal, and very, very leathery. This one is like, it's drifting away from that rose, oud, and uh, uh, amber combination, and saffron. Let me tell you the notes for this. So, this is considered to be a woody leather oud which is like the right description for it and then on fragrantica it's got 4.15 which is a lot and it's compared to amouage interlude man i've not smelled that one so i don't know so the top note for this is oregano pimento seeds and bergamot so it's like definitely very aromatic spicy middle notes of me me opoponax amber olibanum and citruses and the base notes of smoke oud leather sandalwood and patchouli so yes it has like this earthiness uh, it's very, um, like, I wouldn't wear this perfume. Like, this is definitely a very, very masculine perfume. This one is like a very raw man, a person who is very um, strong, very... Uh, let me give, paint you a picture. Like, this reminds me of Ragnar from the Vikings. It's like, it just gives me that, you know. It's very, like, because of that leathery, it is very crude. It has, like, even the 
oud and the smoke and everything it's a very crude one it's a very uh, non processed uh, you can actually smell the elements here and there the spices the aromatics everything is very raw it's not like processed and it's not like amalgamated like nicely you can smell this and that and this perfume changes like throughout the day it's gorgeous but on a man <laughs> i'll be all over this person you know it's like when ali wears this perfume and ali is not very fond of these strong perfumes unless he's dressing up or he's wearing a suit or something for an event or something but usually just going out he would never wear this and yes you should not ideally it's a very 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 potent very dress up kind of perfume this is a strictly 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 without spelling it don't even take a chance because if i could pick one fragrance from my entire collection and tell you not a blind buy this one is definitely not a blind buy and this literally feels like you know all those raw ingredients i feel it was a bomb and it exploded and like the whole air just gets filled with this perfume you will like like if my entire house will smell of this when i spray this not just my room you know and this one's projection is like i don't know 8 feet or more it's like people will just smell you like from a distance you know you're going to keep leaving a trail behind you if you're walking in a mall probably from one end to the other end of the mall okay i'm exaggerating a little bit but you can, you can catch my drift right it's like uh, leaves a long 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 trail and plus uh, the longevity is 12 hours again won't go away when you wash it like for example if i spray it on my wrist or on my hand and if i wash it it won't go away you can still smell whiffs of it you know so yeah amazing perfume not a blind buy definitely meant for winter nights or very very cloudy winter day and also it's like a dressy dress up kind of perfume masculine for sure this for me is a 10 out of 10 just because how how unique it is now i haven't smelled smelled uh, uh, amouage interlude man so i don't know but in my opinion from all the middle eastern perfumes nobody had the guts or courage to actually create something like this so hats off to swiss arabian for being adventurous and from this uh, shagaf oud range the last one which is like beast mode is the shagaf oud azrak which is the blue i absolutely love the bottle of this the color it's like and plus when i hold it it kind of leaves my fingerprint which is like because of the heat and then it disappears it's weird i don't know what this paint is but it's like a metallic uh, matte metallic thing and this perfume like think of the aswad but with uh, uh, a little more sweetness and more approachability so you remember when i said this one is like not approachable and snobby this one is slightly more friendly so This again is a sweet leather oud. Um this one is compared to nothing if I'm not mistaken. It's just like your shagaf oud combined with the aswad, the black one and the golden one. The top notes are honey and agarwood, middle notes of cinnamon, amber and madagascar vanilla and the base notes of patchouli and leather. Oud leather with like a lot of sweetness. So and also that incense feeling, it's a little bit toned down in this. I can still it's not listed over here the as uh, the incense. but i can still feel like that little smokiness going on and this is like a gorgeous perfume as well now the thing is like a lot of people say that buying both of these is redundant because you can actually combine this one and this one and get the same i disagree because when you combine this one and this one it's going to create a monster that you don't want to it smells good but it's a monster and it's a bit too much like even when you want your presence to be felt that's a little aggressive that's like a little bit too much like that's when like a person is like just being obnoxious you know so there's a thin line between being bold and obnoxious and that one crosses the line so this one is like a good mixture of the two this is a very sweet leather and if you're thinking ishkal shiyuk i'm sure one of y'all because our minds are very similar so like in my mind also immediately i thought leather sweet ishkal shiyuk no they're quite different ishkal shiyuk is very basic it's a very basic just imagine sweet suede leather which is soft this one is like leather leather a lot of agar wood which is like the huge dif difference between the two and of course this is like so much more sweeter than the other because this is the honey sweet which is like a bit like viscous you know anyhow masculine fragrance uh, i don't think i would ever wear this perfume like out of the entire shagaf range i will wear the uh, oud aswad which is a black one and the golden one which is the original shagaf oud the rest of them i'll leave it for my husband to use again for me this is a 10 out of 10 cent the projection is uh let's say 6 feet and the longevity 12 plus hours like all of these like shagafs are like 12 plus hours they are the beast of the beast you know like the the, the what do you call it um you know when you play a video game there's like a boss i think it's called a boss villain or something <laughs> 
which is the most difficult to like kill. The, these are the boss of all the Oud perfumes and the long lasting Beast Mood perfumes. This video would not be complete, an Oud video would not be complete if I had not mentioned Badiyal Oud, Oud for glory. This is one of Latafa's cheapies. It's so, so, so reasonably priced. It's like I think $18 or something or $20 at max. This is like a sweeter version of uh, Oud Mood but not as potent as sugar food. It's like something in between. And this is definitely milder. So although it's a beast mode in the sense it stays for the longest time, the projection is like, let's say three feet. It's not more than that. This will create a big scent bubble, but it's not going to like leave trail and trail behind, right? But this is for me like probably, like see, I'm smelling all my oud perfumes. And this one I feel is a little magical. This entire range, I don't know. There's something about this range that does it for me. Like this one, I smell all these ouds and now this one is just making me feel like a little, uh, there's a magic, there's like a attraction. It just does something inside me, it stirs me from the inside. You know, it's like my brain is like uh, in uh, fantasy mode. It's just so beautiful. Like this one is like, I, I can't see anybody not liking this perfume. And like even this as a starter oud, although it's quite potent, it's quite like uh, long lasting and everything. This is like a good oud to start with because this can be a layering uh, uh, oud as well. So of course this is compared to Initio's oud for greatness. And this one is not banyadi oud. So you will not feel, although like it does kind of, you know, if you feel the bottle, it's a bit like leathery or rubbery or something. It's more rubbery actually, not leathery. And you get like a hint of that. The top notes for this are bergamot, pink pepper and black currants, the heart of peony, caramel and oud wood, base notes of raspberry, patchouli and dry amber. So I think it's because of all those um, citrus or berry uh, notes in here, along with that peppercorn, but then you all also have these sweet notes, you know, uh, and the patchouli is like the dirty patchouli. It's like a slightly earthy patchouli. It gives you like the wet earth kind of scent. and. Again, this is one of those perfumes you feel like it's raining outside and you have oud perfume on. This one is like that perfume which has just the right amount of oud, just the right amount of the resins, right, just the right amount of the spices and the right amount of the fruits and sweetness. You know, like it's like a touch of everything, touch of everything. And it's like not like cloying you. It's like even if you like stick this to your nose and keep smelling it for the rest of the day, you will not get nauseous. You're not going to feel a headachey or anything. It's just one gorgeous perfume. This is like a 10 out of 10. If I could give this 11 out of 10, I would. This is one of my favorite perfumes forever will be in my collection and I love it. This is for me night, but any season. You can wear this anytime. Also on occasions, you can like pull this off. This is unisex. I feel like it's equal. Men or women can wear this. The sillage is like, the projection is like four feet, you know, but the longevity is like a lot. It's eight plus hours. And I love this scent. This is the scent that you'll wear it today and tomorrow you'll smell your skin, you'll still smell it. You put this on your clothes and for some reason you did not do your laundry for seven days. Go to your laundry room, This will the laundry room will smell of this. Very, very beautiful fragrance. So this is something that I would always recommend my uh, followers uh, to enjoy and its sister as well, which is the <laughs> Amethyst. I am sure you guys were expecting this one and the uh, Oud for Glory like in this video, right? Is Just imagine the Oud for Glory, but it has a lot of sweetness and rose. That one, the sweetness was very like toned down. This one is like elevated and it's very rosy and the rose is like, you can think of a mixture of the pink roses and the dark roses. It's like a combination of all the roses made into a sugary jammy paste and then you have mixed oud in it. You've added like a hint of pepper. Let me tell you the notes and everything. So this is categorized as an amber vanilla and on Fragrantica it has got 4.23. Smells like Initio's Atomic Rose but I don't think they are dupes, they are in the same family. Top notes are bergamot, pink peppercorn and blackcurrant. Heart notes of Turkish Rose, Bulgarian Rose and Jasmine and the base notes of agarwood, amber and vanilla. Stunning, stunning. This is your Arabian, not even princess, this is your Arabian queen. Confident, uh, very, very beautiful. Somebody who takes a bath in milk with uh, uh, rose water, you know, and rose petals. 
and like soaks herself and when she comes out she smells like this you know it's like the agar wood is also not too overwhelming this is more of a rosy perfume no one can call this an oud dominant perfume this is a very rose dominant perfume so again if you don't like rose you're not gonna like it but at the same time you know this color of the bottle it reminds me this perfume juice reminds me of this color it's uh, concentrated it's thick it's like that dark purple kind of royal purple kind of a thing I had given the celebrity as evergreen from dark shadows you know like it's very like uh, seductive and it's also quite uh, like seductive in an aggressive way you know but at the same time like the confidence level is through the roof beautiful this again for me 10 out of 10 projection six feet uh, longevity 12 plus hours beautiful fragrance next up is something I just had to put because this perfume which is the uh, Al Noble line from Latafa. This is the Amir, Al Noble Amir, which means literally prince. And this guy is very deceptive because, like, when you look at it and when you first smell it, you just feel like um, um, it will not have power. It smells very mellow. But the thing is, like, I sprayed this and people around me kept complimenting me throughout the day. So although I was not feeling it much, people around me they were like. Um, what are you wearing? Although this feels to me a uh, slightly more masculine scent. And this one is the closest thing you'll find to Ishkal Shiryuk, by the way. Recently, somebody had asked me if this is like same and would it be redundant to buy both. Now, if you're a collector, you will notice a slight little differences. But if you are somebody who just wants like one of these kind of perfumes and just buy either or. Ishkal Shiryuk is a little bit more strong. This one it has oud in it and it is a bit more woody let's just call it the other one is like a sweet suede uh, leather this one is like a sweet leather oud but it is very toned down it smells woody it literally smells like you've taken wood that is scented and that's the smell on this let me tell you the notes on this and this is categorized as a woody aromatic top notes are apple pink pepper and rosemary middle notes of cloves florals and the base notes of oud vetiver Saperis Escula or something, Labdenum and Patchouli. Now, I don't know most of these notes. I don't know what the hell Cypress something is. I'll check it up. But, you know, cloves, rosemary, like you would think it would be very offensive. But it is all like blended really well, just like the Ishkal Shuyuk. So if, you're put, if you've had the uh, privilege of smelling Ishkal Shuyuk, this is very similar, but like a little bit more of like, aromatics in it and that oud, little bit of oud in it very woody as well so i feel like they are both necessary in your collection if you like this kind of scent but if you just want one in this dna just go for either uh, amir noble and ish or ishkal Chu. do not ask me to choose between the two it's too difficult you guys like give me these choices and i'm like oh no how am i gonna like decide which one i like you know it is like leaning masculine i wouldn't call it a unisex but at the same time i feel like i can probably like pull this off because it's so mild and everything like if I put this on my skin I'm gonna smell like divine like on Eid or something I would like to spray this on myself the projection I would say is like two feet but the longevity is like six to seven hours easily easily and I don't think this is the kind of perfume that you need to keep respraying you know it'll just stay and also it's like a very linear perfume it's like flat you know it's like okay flat when I say flat it sounds bad but it's linear like you can smell all the notes together and it just like towards the end when it's like barely there on your skin, that's when you smell like just the sweetness and the other wood and a little bit of leather, you know, like I would give this uh, a 9 out of 10, not 10 out of 10. I would give this a 9 out of 10 because like, uh, I don't want to say that I prefer Ishkal Shuyu because they both are so different, depends on your mood. And the celebrity I'd given this to was Peter O'Toole from uh, Lawrence of Arabia and him in that as that character, you know, gorgeous scent. Now the last one is something interesting okay because there are two perfumes but I'm gonna use them as a combination okay you can use them separately as well or you can combine the two and create like this perfect magical perfume and this is the one which I was saying uh, is your uh, winter wood cabin by the fireplace uh, drinking rum or uh, cognac or whatever those dark color things are scotch I think whiskey I don't know it's one of those it's your uh, Amir Al Oud, 
by the way, Amira Lood, there are two perfumes, right? This is the Intense Oud, by the way. So this is a different one. And the other one is uh, Majdal Sultan by Azdaf. Azdaf is a sub-brand of Latafa. And both of these very much have the Buy at the Fireplace DNA. They're not dupes. So don't come for me when I say that they are in the same DNA. It's the same feeling of being in a winter cabin with the logs, with the fire. And, you know, you're having a cup of... Uh, uh, spiced latte or something I don't know like you know so let me start with the first one now this one Amir Al Oud this is like closer to by the fireplace than um, Majdal Sultan this is definitely a very ambery scent so you have this uh, alcoholic not alcoholic but the boozy amber with something sweet with Oud this one has got like a rating of 4.29 on Fragrantica the top notes are woodsy notes agarwood Middle notes are vanilla and sugar and the base notes of agarwood, sandalwood and herbal notes. So yeah, you do have like this weird like herbal thingy going on. Now a lot of people when they first smell it, they don't like it. But then it settles down and you are like, you know, sold on it. You're like sold. You become addicted to it. And it, it is just such an intriguing scent. By the way, it is ultra sweet, right? It's like sweet. Like the sugar note when they're saying they're not kidding. It's super sweet. And although there's no amber in this, I don't know why. It's uh, smelling very, very ambery to me. But yeah, the agar wood is very present. The vanilla and the sugar is there. And these herbal notes, like they're very tricksily saying herbal notes, but we don't know what the notes are. And that's like the magic of this perfume. Now, what is the difference between this one and the other one? Think of this as this one, more heightened, but this one has more of, less of sweetness, more of aromatics and the herbs, like a lot of it and spices as well. So this one is like a definitely, like if you think this like can be worn by a woman or a man, the other one is a very masculine scent. Like um, Majdal Sultan, like when you sniff it, you're like, oh my God, super masculine. And you get this weird, again, that herbal scent. It smells like, you know the Wicks Vapor Rub you get? But then, you know, there's a herbal version of it, which you actually have herbs in a pouch and you smell it like... <laughs> I'll try and find a picture because I don't think anybody knows about this. And usually you get these things in Thailand or India and places like that, you know, like East Asia or something. And this one mixed with like, mm, let me just tell you the notes because I'm just like, I'm sure I'm just like confusing all of you. This one has got 4.37 on Fragrantica, which is awesome. So this one has notes of uh, smoke and tobacco on the top. Middle notes of myrrh, incense, pepper and saffron. And the base notes of resins, amber, fir and cedar. Now the tobacco, if you're getting scared, you're like, oh my God, does it smell like a pipe? No, it doesn't smell like a pipe. The tobacco smells like literally, you know, the, the tobacco sheets you get, which are rolled with a little bit of oud burning. So that like that incense thing, the oud is not like the woody oud. This is like the incense oud. So the tobacco, which is not burning, but with the smoke of the oud. That's the best way I can explain this. Along with like a lot of resins and I'm sure they're herbs. They're just saying there's pepper or what are they calling it? So yeah, they claim it's just pepper and saffron. It has like those weird herbs even this one has, right? It has like something which smells cold, uh, refreshing. I don't know. It's like, I feel like it's a combination of eucalyptus and sage, but like I can't be sure. But it does remind me of like slightly sage, slightly even palo santo, you know, like a little bit of that essence of palo santo. Like all those kind of combine. And when you mix both these together, it's like the perfect balance it's like the perfect balance this just like grabs all the sweetness along with this one which is like really 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 smoky and herbal so to not let this become too like uh incensey like let's just call it the only drawback i can say this one has is the smokiness now everybody keeps asking me would you buy this one or this one and i keep telling you guys like i cannot make these choices because i love all these perfumes a lot but if you put a gun to my head i will choose this one i would definitely like if Somebody's like, eh, choose one, you know, <laughs> I'll be like, okay, I'll just choose this one. Why? Because I can wear this more. This one is a very like selected mood, selected uh, occasion or uh, selected people who you would hang out with and you would want them not to get offended. This is like a little bit of a, like obnoxious, you know, but this one is beautiful. But when you combine these two, now both of these used together projects for like eight feet. <laughs> it's like everyone will smell it. It'll leaf trails. Uh, it'll people will like like immediately look at you because yeah if it's if you're smelling of these perfumes you're going to be very 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 unique anyhow all the middle eastern perfumes usually 
Okay, in Dubai it's like normal, but like if you wear it in another country, people will look at you because you smell like a royalty. You smell expensive, rich, and beautiful. And this is this combination is definitely a head turner. This combination, those two perfumes individually are 10 out of 10 for me. But this combination is again, like I said, if I could give it more than 10, I would. But like it's just like at the top. The combination is at the top. And all these perfumes I mentioned today, these are definitely going to be worn by me a lot more because winter will uh, uh, arrive in Dubai, I think by November or December. It'll be cold, cold by December, not like November. And January is like the coldest month, but it's not really that cold. Like the maximum temperature during daytime will be like 16 degrees, like it's the coldest it gets here. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed these videos because I actually record like for more than an hour for these because I do want you guys to understand the differences between all the oud perfumes because it can kind of get like in your head like really mixed up what smells like what like because I've been using them for like quite some time now um, I can identify the differences and stuff and once you start identifying the differences you will feel there's like they're massively different from each other but if you're looking for like one oud perfume just to have like that option of oud um, I don't know you will have to try all of these like but my personal recommendation would be like Amir Al Oud, Badi Al Oud, you know, and possibly um, Oud Mood. Like these three are like, I can tell you, you will, I can see more people liking these perfumes, you know, than the others. The other ones are really, really potent. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Smell good. Be kind to everybody. If you can't say anything good, don't say anything bad either. Just try and put yourself in other people's shoes. You don't know what other people are going through and you don't know when just simple kind words can help someone, you know. So try and be like nice to each other and uh, uh, yeah, just try and be happy as well. Until next time, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs>